Tonight on Walk the Plank, the award-winning Dead and Buried Treasures finally returns to the airwaves in Fayette County, and I will explain how it all works. We'll take your phone calls, maybe, if there's time, and we'll go behind the scenes of the show with a little tour conducted by yours truly on how we make all the magic on the show. All this plus a special interview with the man who will host the show, starting with the next episode, of course. Uh, all while gearing you up for a night of fun and chills and ghosts and witches and, of course, pirates. <laughs> all this and a whole lot more tonight on Walk the Plank, the pre-show for the award-winning Dead and Buried Treasures, where, where it's Halloween all year long. Stay tuned, if you dare. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Ahoy, mateys, and welcome to Walk the Plank, the pre-show for tonight's entertainment, Dead and Buried Treasures. I'm your host, Eric Sprouse. Although I'm not really the host of this show, I'm more so the host of Dead and Buried Treasures, but you may or may not recognize me. You'd have to really look close. I play a pirate cat, and of course, um, I have an eye patch. I have two eyes here. <laughs> I have really long hair. I have a big pirate cap. Uh, I have a, have a really cheesy, almost Irish-like accent, you know, it's very horrible. Um, but that's my alter ego. Uh, we host monster movies, and we do it every week. But that's not the big news. The big news tonight is we're back on the air in Fayette County, courtesy of our Fright Network. Uh, the, night, the Fright Network is uh, several affiliates that we're broadcast on throughout southwestern Pennsylvania, from uh, BPTV Channel 7, uh, Verizon 32 on Comcast in Bethel Park to uh, PCTV Channel 21 on Comcast downtown Pittsburgh, CUTV, which covers all of Fayette County, Washington County, uh, the Vortex, which is the horror host network, um, the Monster Channel, which is another network that our show airs on. It's all part of a that and a whole many more affiliates are all part of a, a colossal, what we call a fright network, uh, that we uh, air the show on so it gets widespread coverage. But the news tonight is we're back on in Fayette County on, on Atlantic Broadband. See, what happened was, for those of you who, just to bring you all up to speed, uh, we one of our networks, one of our affiliates was CUTV at California University of Pennsylvania, the award-winning TV channel there that is seen on, what is it, 62 in Washington County and 17 in Fayette County. And um, because of the horrible, horrible pandemic uh, that's going on, uh, California University, like all schools, had to close their doors. And when they did, the, we lost our affiliate because the television channel is no longer on the air, at least until uh, everything goes back to normal. So we got a lot of feedback uh, for, on Facebook, uh, instant e uh, IMs, emails, you know, everything, saying, hey, what happened to the show? And I'm like, well, I just can't get it back on there. So I had a lot of uh, suggestions from viewers out there on another channel in Fayette County that might be able to help us out, which was Fayette County TV, which is channel 77. So I happened to bump into a, a fellow horror host of mine. Uh, the, you might even recognize him from he, this very channel, uh, the Spooky Specter from Fright Night Theater. 
and uh, I saw that he was doing his show on Fayette County TV on Channel 77, and I saw that uh, uh, an old buddy of mine from college uh, worked at the station, and I said, this is getting better and better. So we made some arrangements, and voila, here we are. Uh, we're back on the air. How about a little celebration? How about a little celebration graphic? Yeah, that'll work. <laughs> how about some confetti and fireworks? And how about a ghost? Got a ghost? That'll work too. All right, that's enough. <laughs> so. We're back on the air in Fayette County, which is great news for everybody, and it's great news for me, it's great news for uh, the people who work on the show, and it's just a lot of fun. It's, uh, so I'm very happy about it. Couldn't be happier. So, uh, for the new viewers on the show who've never seen Dead and Buried Treasure and look at me going, who is this guy? Why, why, why don't I just change the channel? Before you do, let me tell you what, what we're all about. We host monster movies, uh, classic monster movies. Um, not so much the, the Conjurings and uh, the uh, Saw A18s, <laughs> you know, that are uh, in theaters and out, out and about that are more current, but the classic monster movies of yesteryear, uh, featuring stars like Vincent Price, Abbott and Costello, uh, Christopher Lee, uh, you name it, uh, Boris Karloff, Peter Cushing, you know, those kind of guys. Those guys were legendary. In Hollywood, they have stars on the Walk of Fame, but the the weird thing about it is, none of the current generation really know who that is. I gotta tell you, my niece looked at me and didn't know who Tom Cruise was. Like Tom Cruise, like you don't know who Tom Cruise is? Nope. And I guess, wow, all of a sudden I felt my bones age about 30 years, and I was like, all right, well. Let me tell you who he is. So, you know, you realize that that generation gap is here. And, you know, when you get older, it's not like a switch that you're old. It's an evolution. And I'm starting to feel this evolution. So, uh, but anyway, we host monster movies on Dead and Buried Treasures, which is the show that follows this, as this is the pre-show. And on that show, I play a pirate captain. A pirate captain, I do, named Calico Drake. And uh, he and his crew accidentally stumbled upon a curse which transports them to the 21st century where they have to they're forced an eternity of hosting monster movies that sounds real right <laughs> it sure does and it's real enough especially here on Fayette County TV channel 77 that's what we like where we basically deal with sci-fi and pop culture and monster movies and things of that nature so it'll be a lot of fun It'll be a lot of fun for everybody watching tonight. And uh, when we come back, yeah! I'll intro the movie for tonight. It is a good one. It's done by, the, uh, done by a, an actor in Hollywood who holds the record for bringing in the most money in the history of acting. While you stump each other in the room you know, with that question, that trivia question, uh, I'll introduce him and I'll introduce the movie for tonight. Plus, I'll introduce the normal host of our show. I'm not the normal host. I host the show after this. I host the main event, Dead and Buried Treasures. But we need a host for Walk the Plank, and we've got a great one. And uh, I'll also take you on a little tiny, just a taste of a behind-the-scenes tour of the show. All this and a whole lot more when we come back. Stay tuned. We asked, and you responded. Hey, I was just calling in because I wanted to say I like what you guys have got going on there. I really enjoy watching because I used to watch shows like this back when I was a kid, and it, watching it brings back a little bit of nostalgia from before, and I just wish there was more uh, shows like this on the air now because watching it brings back all those memories of before, and it's just really nice to see all that. Why, hello, Dead and Buried Treasures. I just wanted to call and leave a message that I was very impressed by your show. It's very well done, and it might be one of the best locally produced programs I've ever seen. It reminded me of the old Chiller Theater in the 80s with Chili Billy, and I absolutely love your show. I tell everybody about it. I even had 
my friends over, some kids, and my grandchildren over a couple of Fridays back when it was on. And we all gathered around and made popcorn like the old days and, and had some fun watching some television as a family. So I thought it was very well done. And Captain Drake is very funny. And the parrot is hilarious. Well written, well crafted. Very good show. Keep it up, Dagon Berry Treasures. Hey man, I think your show's kind of groovy, and I just love it. Groovy, man, groovy. Hey, keep up the good work, guys. Okay, talk to you later. There are no further messages. Ah, operators are standing by. Call now. Ah. Welcome back to Walk the Plank. I'm Eric Sproul, the host for tonight. And tonight alone, I'm normally from this point forward, I'm just going to be more or less kind of like a guest. Um, we'll have a brand new host next week. Tonight's movie is City of the Dead. <laughs> and it's a great one, starring the legendary Christopher Lee. Lee was a successful actor at movie franchises. Um, he was the man with the golden gun, going all the way back to the James Bond era, that are still a franchise that goes today. Uh, in Star Wars, you might have known him as Count Dooku in the uh, original trilogy. And I'll tell you another small tie he had with Star Wars in just a second. But he was also Saruman in the Lord of the Rings franchise. And of course, he played the title role of Count Dracula Ooh -hoo -hoo. Uh, in all ten films that he was Dracula. Yikes. How about that career where he almost played the villain in everything he did? Now, the other tie to Star Wars, I was going to tell you, he was almost Governor Tarkin in the first Star Wars film, A New Hope. Uh, he always played Tarkin. But the role went to his good friend, Peter Cushing, who uh, starred with him as Van Helsing to his Dracula in several Dracula films in the 50s through the 70s. What an amazing career. Uh, and the other odd thing, he also was almost part of another franchise, but turned it down just because he had too much on his plate. Guess who else he almost was? He almost played Dr. Loomis, the psychiatrist of Michael Myers and Donald Pleasance, who played that role for one, two, three, four, five, five, six films. No, it's not true. He wasn't in Halloween 3, but he was in Halloween 1, 2, 4, 5, and The Curse of Michael Myers in um, the sixth film. But I think he died while making that film. So he was in quite a number of films. Uh, he could have been in that franchise as well. His movies have made more money than any other actor in the history of not just Hollywood, but the planet. And uh, I know there'll be other criti critics out there that debate me on that, but it's true. He's made more money. His films have made more money than Harrison Ford and Samuel L. Jackson. He's made all, over $4.4 billion at the box office. I'll tell you what, let's let the trailer speak for itself. Here's a look at City of the Dead. Yeah! <laughs> Burn, witch, burn, witch, burn, burn, burn. So shouted the people of Whitewood when they burned Elizabeth Selwyn in 1692. Going to a place called Whitewood for a week or so to do some research. Whitewood? How many God-fearing folks visit Whitewood nowadays? Any witches buried there? There are indeed. On Candlemas Eve, a coven of witches gathered beneath the Raven's Inn to perform a black mass in the honor of Lucifer. The witch, Elizabeth Selwyn, marked a young girl for sacrifice. Leave Whitewood. Leave Whitewood tonight.
You know, Christopher Lee has made over 200 films. 200 films. And he's played a villain in about 85% of them. Uh, from The Mummy to... No, he wasn't Karloff's role. He played a mummy, not the mummy. But he played The Mummy. He played... He, he starred with, uh, he was in, he worked with Alfred Hitchcock, the legendary Alfred Hitchcock. Uh, he was also in uh, the title role in Sherlock Holmes films, although in that one he wasn't a villain. <laughs> Sherlock Holmes certainly wasn't a villain. But speaking a little of Sherlock Holmes, it's time for a little investigation of my own. You see, like I said before, I'm not the host of this show, but we thought it might be fun to do it since it's our first show back on Fayette County TV here on Channel 77. So, who is the host? Well, he's done it for so long now, as the show has aired for, what, two years? Year and a half to two years on, our, as, on the Fright Network, right? On all of the affiliates, right? On our Fright Network... Uh, and there's no one else better qualified to introduce himself than Rich Kanji. So that's why tonight I've asked our usual host, who has yet to be on the show in Fayette County, join us. Rich, are you there? I'm here, Captain, my <laughs> captain. <laughs> How are you tonight? I'm doing excellent. I wish we could have... I wish we could have done this in, uh, in person, but I understand you had some other commitments and you couldn't make it tonight. But at least here, you're on the show now uh, while we, you know, do our first walk the plank for Fayette County. So thanks for joining us. Yeah, this, this will be great. This is a, our, our, our other first together, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, I was, just, I was just telling everybody how we're, this isn't our first walk the plank. This isn't our first episode. But it's our first one as we reboot the show in Fayette County. And I was uh, explaining to them how we are on now there because of the, uh, the whole uh, pandemic thing and the whole California University. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about, uh, I'll tell you what, before we even get to that, why don't you tell us, because this is a bit of an interesting story, why don't you tell us how you became the host of the show and how you'll take it over next month? Well, simply put, I drew the last straw. <laughs> no, no. Uh, it, it is funny because uh, there weren't many. Hey, there, there, there weren't. On hey, anniversary together. Wait, 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 wait. There weren't many straws in that jar. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, there wasn't. Okay, I'm but sorry. Go it, ahead. We, uh, yeah, it's it's funny because um, just uh, last month or so would mark a one-year anniversary that me and you met. Right, and yeah. we met at uh, Fury Mastracci's birthday party that was at, uh, at an event in, in town. And uh, he was a mutual friend of ours. And he does outtakes with Fury. And it's a uh, review show. Some people probably have seen it. Uh, others haven't, but it's on YouTube and Bethel Park TV. And right. And he does movie reviews, so uh, we we get there, and um, he's talking to you and Dave Cable and uh, some other guys, and I recognize you because I know you've commented on a lot of stuff on Facebook, and you two interacted, so I knew who you were just from Facebook. I didn't right. know anything about Dead Mary Treasures or what you do. Right. And uh, he kind of introduced me and you, and... Um, Dana, who is Gertie on the show now, right. and uh, told you that I, I had a bat cave in my basement, and it was funny because you were like, you're the guy! <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I was like, yeah, yeah, so you, it, it's funny because we kind of knew each other but didn't know each other. I mean, we we were aware of each other, and uh, we started talking, and I remember you were talking to Dana, actually, mm -hmm. about doing an episode, which you'll be showing soon, and uh, asking if she would be okay playing a character on the show, and she said, yeah, sure, and uh, that was about it, as far as... I wasn't involved in the show at all. It was just it was going to be Dana, my wife. <laughs> That's right. Hey, I got to tell you something. I, when I first bumped into you and Dana, I didn't want to talk to you. I'm like, who is that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Did you even ask her? Said you're going to be okay in like a little scantily clad pirate outfit. Like, yeah, sure was. <laughs> yeah. 
That's right. And I'm like, and then she's well, my husband. I'm like, who? <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, the guy do it. But I got to tell you something too. Uh, uh, when you brought that up, I totally forgot about it until just now. The 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 Bat Cave, and this is a little backstory for our viewers too. Uh, on on you, I saw this Bat Cave on Facebook, and it was like pictures of it, and I'm like, oh man, who built this? And you know, when you read fa Facebook posts and things like that. You know, on a news feed, you, you don't know where these people are. I'm thinking, this guy, who knows? And it's like, he's got a bookcase that does what? And I saw, like, so when I bump into Fiore, who's our producer on the show for the Bethel Park area, he says to me, yeah, that guy, I know the Bat the Batman guy, the Batcave guy has the Batcave. I said, what are you talking about? And he says, yeah, the Batcave. I said, you're the guy? I couldn't believe. What are the chances of that, first of all? Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, I see a post on Facebook about somebody I don't even know. I don't even think it was on Fiore's page. But uh, but I saw it and I'm like, oh my god, this guy has a bat cave, and of course you do really have a giant uh, bat cave that I was just floored by. That we just giving a little tease to our audience out there, it, we're, we work it into an episode where Batman and Calico Drake in an upcoming episode do battle. <laughs> you know, um, walk the plank goes and, and uh, myself being the host. That came later after that um, because it was supposed. It wasn't supposed to be me. My, I, I, it's funny because I told you earlier when we were talking before the show. I said my grandma, my grandma Sprouls used to have a saying that sometimes you fall into an outhouse and you come out with a new brown suit on. And <laughs> but there's a little, uh, there's a little bit of different verbiage on that. <laughs> you know, uh, sometimes you fall into a blank house. You know, talk a little bit about. Um, keeping it in the family because you know we've now worked for about a year and this is our first real episode on Fayette County and the first pre show for uh walk the plank for our movie our first episode ever that we're airing in Fayette County tonight talk about keeping it in the family we've now because you mentioned you brought up Dana your wife who plays a character on the show now and of course your father-in-law who Dana's dad who is our chef in the galley on the on the ship Talk a little bit about how, with the pandemic that happened recently, that's still going on as we speak, how this has made it easier for doing, uh, keeping the show alive. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the beautiful part about having um, kind of two production studios in a way. Right, we yeah. Walk the plank from my house, and you shoot um, Dead and Buried Treasures and a lot of stuff from your house. Now, you've shot... Dana's uh, segments from Dead and Buried Treasures at my house because it's more convenient. We put up a green screen. And it's nice because you can go anywhere, really. Right, you yeah. Anywhere. And that's the beautiful part, too, Rich, about this. It, it was almost by accident that you became the host of the show, but uh, we have Fiore to thank for that. And, man, he's going to crawl me that about that forever. Uh, you know, <laughs> it's like the godfather. You know, hey, you know, I did you a favor. You know, it's like, like I know you did. I'm going to have to live with that now. But uh, <laughs> but were you a, a fan of uh, pirates lore ever, or was it just like a big like pop culture sci-fi Batman kind of fun thing? Yeah, no. The, the funny thing about that is um, I hate pirates. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, I uh, I never was really into pirates um, as much as, as Dana. Dana loved Pirates of the Caribbean and all that stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I was said, oh, do you want to do the pre-show? I'm like, sure, yeah, this would be awesome because, you know, everything that you're doing on here, I'm into it. I'm all for it. And I've never seen your show until after we met at the birthday party. But uh, I remember going home. I was like, you know, I should look this guy up and and see what this Dead and Buried Treasures is all about. Right. And uh, I was like, wow, this, this is really good. Like, you have characters, and you're interacting with a, a talking parrot, an animatronic parrot, and yeah. uh, animatronic uh, skeleton, baby bones. And I'm like, there's like a story coinciding here. And I grew up, I was, I guess, young enough, believe it or not, still to uh, remember Chili Billy and Chiller Theater. Yeah. Because yep. my parents watched it. Right. So that's what this reminded me of. And I'm like, this is awesome, but this is like a better version of it because you have more story and um, there's more in-depth stories involved here than just uh, some skits with one character and a couple characters. But you had, like, a lot going on. And I 
was just like, wow, this, I'm in. Like, count me in. Yeah, and it's going to be great having you as a host of the show starting uh, with our next episode. But if we wanted to give the viewers at home a little uh, backstory about how you got the job and how, you know, you're on the show. And uh, I appreciate the kind words about, about being linked uh to Chili Billy. I, I grew up with him as well. I wish I had Terminal Stare on the show, but now that we met you and your beautiful wife Dana, we kind of have our own Terminal Stare on the show. Yeah. You know, so yeah. uh, I think things will be uh, great for us, and I'm hoping that our audience will love us for some time. Hey, thanks again for joining us tonight, Rich. It was really great uh, catching up with you, uh, pr promoting the show and what's going to be happening here in the next, hopefully, long relationship we have with Fayette County TV. Yes, yes, I'm looking forward to, uh, you know, being on Fayette County TV. Uh, I know a lot of, I have some close friends that live in Fayette County, so um, this will be a surprise to them to see me on their TV screen, even for a pre-show. Yeah, absolutely. Make sure you tell them to watch. Yeah, I definitely will. All right, thanks again, Rich, and uh, we'll, see you, uh, we'll see you in the next show. All right, looking forward to it. All righty. Rich Kanji, the host of Walk the Plank, and the pre-show of Dead and Buried Treasures. And speaking of which, we are almost out of time. I'm being told we're almost out of time. Yeah, okay. Uh, so next time on the show, we will be previewing the movie Theater of Blood with Vincent Price. Great movie. Great whodunit. Well, it's not so much a whodunit. It's a slasher film. <laughs> um, next time on Walk the Plank. But hey, stay tuned. Dead and Buried Treasures is next, and that's the main event. This is just the pre-show. And also, next time on the pre-show, Walk the Plank, we'll be taking your phone calls. That's right, we'll give you a phone number. You can call in. You can ask all kinds of questions. Uh, you might see the phone number during the show. Uh, if you call the queue and there's people ahead of you and it's filled, because sometimes it does get filled when we do this, It'll go to voicemail. If it does, leave a voicemail. We'll answer as many of the questions we can, including the voicemails on the show. We, we just want to make sure we extend that offer to everyone. So, oh, before we go, I want to tell you if you're a, a past member of the show, a past viewer of the show, a member of me crew, that is, don't forget our fan club is finally up and running at Phoenix Comics and Toys. That's Phoenix Comics and Toys. Look for them on Etsy and Facebook, where you can get a Captain Calico Drake decoder statue. Uh, where we will give secret messages during the show that if you decode them, you can win prizes. Uh, Keychain doubloons, a quarterly newsletter, a signed 8x10 photo of myself, Captain Drake, and my co-host, Jack, my cockatoo, uh, and a couple others. Uh, don't forget about it. It's uh, Phoenix Comics and Toys. That's our fan club. Also, more importantly, redbubble.com uh, spirits. No pun intended, right? <laughs> our merchandise on the show, and 100% of the profits generated from you buying some of that merchandise is donated to local animal shelters during this uh, horrible, horrible time of this coronavirus and COVID-19 and this horrible pandemic. A lot of times when things like this happen, uh, even during earthquakes, floods, uh, things like that, our four-legged friends are overlooked. Uh, not now. So 100% of the profits during these horrible times is being donated to the local animal shelter. So please go to redbubble.com, search for Dead and Buried Treasures. When you find us, look at our store, the store of Captain Calico Drake, and you can buy hoodies, t-shirts, wall clocks, shower curtains, uh, computer sleeves, iPhone covers, uh, leggings, everything. Uh, there that's pirate related to me show and again 100% of the profits is being donated to uh, relief efforts of local animal shelters or the ASPCA in the area so please do that we're out of time that's right they're flagging me down they're giving me this <laughs> so we are done I will see you next time on the show where I will be a guest Rich Kanji will be on the show as the host walk the plank pre-show for dead and buried treasures which is up right now Stay tuned, folks, to Dead and Buried Treasures, where it's Halloween all year long. <laughs> we'll see you in a few.